Hello, everyone. Um, indeed, very um, confusing title on purpose uh, from our marketing colleagues. But uh, diving into it actually is what we did in iQuest. Uh, we are IT company, so we provide IT solutions. And our mission is to bring technology into the business. So among other things, what we do, among the cool things what we do, we always scan what are the technologies out there and what is possible to do to bring them to the business and make business not only more efficient, but also cooler and have more fun when working with technology. Now, diving here has a very specific meaning is because at some point, um, I think we started two years ago when we approached Microsoft partners uh, at that time it was Microsoft Switzerland, but also Redmond organization, and said, okay, we have a business use case. Can we together envision how the most advanced, coolest technology, but at the level of reality, not science fiction, can model that business use case? So to introduce you in the context, Here we are talking about a medical device manufacturer. So this medical device manufacturer, first thing they did, they worked on the connectivity. So they made their devices to be connected real time that offered them possibility to have remote access and to do monitoring of their devices. Of course, monitoring of the devices collects a lot of data. So receiving tons of data enabled them to do analysis. So to do data analysis, and of course an advanced step of data analysis is to do predictive analysis, machine learning, stream analytics, that made them into the position to innovate and to redefine their business model. And to be more concrete, the challenge of the innovation was to switch from selling device and charging cost of the device to a service model when this company would charge their customers per use consumption. So this is the context. Now, use case is remote assistance because in this organization, servicing remotely located devices is associated with high costs. So they have to deliver high uptimes because uptimes means operation and means income. And high quality of the service is a lot related to the reliability of the systems. Meet Gloria. Gloria works as a service delivery manager in the service organization of the customer. You know, before her job was quite boring, mostly reactive, um, just receiving the calls, escalations, and acting on issues which are uh, reported by the customer. Now, since we have introduced our system with highly advanced technology, Gloria has a dashboard and an entire monitoring system behind it where her responsibility today is to monitor the performance and health state of the systems and actually to help to predict the potential outages and problems in functioning of the systems in advance. So what she see here, she sees here a landscape in North America, you know, of the devices and real time about the functioning of the systems. One day she spotted the information that one of the parameters in the New England area turns red. Now our system allows her to drill into that information and what she discovers is that it's a high seas lab in Baltimore where a system called X ZX80 is showing very bad performance. She can drill even more into that. She can see the map of the lab. She can understand or see exactly where the system is located. She can even look at the maintenance log to see, okay, what is the historical information regarding the operation of the system. And more than that, she can collect the operational KPIs that helps her to analyze what's going on, what are the trends of the operating state of the system. Now when she collects all that information, she has all the information she needs, 
she can contact the customer. And here is the big change. She does it proactively before customer even notices that something is going wrong in the system. Now meet Sue. Sue works for HiSys Lab, and she is a lab operator. And she is used to communicate with Gloria because she received a call from Gloria always notifying her about strange situations in the lab. So Gloria communicates to Sue that there is this ZX80 system that has potential problems, and more than that, she can even indicate to Sue exactly the location of that system. What we have envisioned for that lab, because we are highly advanced um, solution provider, you know, these devices, they're also equipped with HoloLens and with the software that allows lab operator to look into the device and see real-time parameters of the functioning of the device. Now, at the first glance, when Sue looks into the parameters, she doesn't really see the problem, but then she makes a call with Gloria, and when Gloria feeds into the screen or visual view of Sue additional information from the analysis from the monitoring system, they both realize that indeed there is a high chance that this system will have an outage within the next days. Now, because the system is urgent, Gloria contacts immediately Promod. Promod is a service engineer in the same organization as Gloria, and she joins call and actually helps Sue on identifying the potential workarounds or temporary fixes to ensure that the system runs before a permanent fix is done. Now, while Promod and Sue are discussing, in the system we have generated automatically the ticket, the case, and all the information that happened until now, the discussions, the analysis, the details of the parameters have been already fed into the system, into that case. So what Gloria does now, she contacts David. David is a field service engineer who is responsible for physical maintenance of the devices. Now, because we know that David, David is a lot on the road, we use a variable to communicate to David the details about the location of the lab and schedule and what he has to do. More than that, also the location where he can pick up the spare part to be able to replace it at the device. Of course, David is a specialist. He is also using the HoloLens, but this time we use HoloLens not to analyze the real operating state of the system, but as a user guide, an interactive user guide to assist David in this complex operation of replacing the damaged spare part. More than that, David can contact Mark, who is a senior colleague in his team, in case he has troubles or need approval or help with resolving the case. In the meantime, Gloria can watch all the things going online and receive real-time information. And more than that, our system collects yet another piece of experience that will help the organization from Gloria to predict even better the such cases in the future. And thus, first of all, increase the quality of the service to the customer, but then also increase the cost efficiency for her organization. Now, this is a theoretical case, but, you know, and by the way, it was developed through quite a long period of time. I think we worked several weeks. We presented it to the customer uh, in Redmond. It was wow. Uh, a lot of enthusiasm. Unfortunately, not that much budget to implement it. But uh, we took a step further and we contacted here in Romania the local partner of a global manufacturer of the robotic arms. And then we just took one of these scenarios and for us it was interesting to take the, the very last case of David replacing that thing in the machine. So uh, TB, my colleague, he is now preparing the real case where we have developed based on a real robot arm, the 3D models, the holograms, and also the software to see how such a field service engineer could be assisted 
in performing a very complicated operation like replacing a battery in the robotic arm. So I um, switch to TB to show you the demo. Can you hear me? Okay. So I will follow uh, what Ande uh, presented before. Um, I will present to you an, an application which uh, goes in the direction of uh, field service, field servicing. Uh, we envision the system which uh, uh, connects to the ticketing system and uh, also the purchasing system. Uh, and what you see is a, a 2D, the 2D part of the application. This is a, a dashboard when I can see here, the tickets assigned to me. There is a, a three seconds lag between uh, what I'm saying and what you see, so apologies for that. Uh, and for each ticket, I can see the media assets which can help me to fulfill my, uh, my uh, duty to do my, uh, my the actions required. And it's possible to open a different kind of uh, documents like PDF, uh, Word, or Excel, and so on. In this case, I will open a PDF document, which describes uh, some maintenance manual, with a ma maintenance manual of, the, of a robotic arm. Also, it is possible to see the details of uh, the ticket, and uh, I'm able to see the metadata, the properties of the device I'm working on, and also I see the service log. This is, this is the log of the activities done on uh, on uh, the device of which what I'm working on. I'm able to place an order. In this case, I order a battery, place an order, and uh, I receive an estimated delivery date. Uh, additionally, we also thought about having the knowledge base uh, available to the field service engineer. This means all the media assets which can help uh, the engineer, and this is a searchable uh, knowledge base with different, different kind of documents, videos, and so on. And also, between others, we have holographic uh, assets, media assets. So uh, I will open one of those. In this case, uh, this will be strictly linked to the ticket where I have to replace a robotic arm a battery. You will see how the, how the HoloLens will maps the surrounding area, detects uh, different surfaces. The HoloLens is able to detect the floors, walls, tables, and so on. And now I'm able to place my uh, robotic arm uh, on the floor because it detected it there is a floor. Uh, also, we implemented some uh, uh, comments, audio comments to do certain actions like bigger bigger, my English is not, not the best, bigger, Romanian uh, voice recognition is not implemented yet, <laughs> so I have to, but either Swiss, so, <laughs> okay, so, but here you can see that uh, I can work around, this is a real holographic experience, if I want, I can go inside, and I can, what, I can check the battery I want to replace. Okay, so I will trigger the activities by clicking on this button. Okay, we could also show the proximity. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the first thing to do, of course. So first, we have to stop the we have to stop the robot uh, from functioning before start working with. So if I do you see this red uh, uh, area around the robot? So if I go a little closer, then I see the collision imminent. So I have to take care to stop the. A robot, uh, this is the first step on the right hand side, you see the guidance of the, of the activities. Stop the robot, then I go next. And if I go next, I can see the first step, I have to remove the, the old battery cap. On the right hand side, it's written step by step. Or either I can command with voice or I can click on the, on the menu. 
And then for the next step, remove old battery, I will click on the menu. And now I can see what's happening here. Next. The old battery, uh, the new battery should be placed inside the robotic arm. And the last one is to assemble the, river, assemble the cap and to restart the robot. Next. Of course, the, the, we have two scenarios. So one is the training, when, uh, for instance, cost cutting, when you have different training centers in the company, you have to bring people in to watch the real devices. Uh, then you can bring, in, uh, bring people in se local uh, training uh, centers and to use virtual devices. And the second one is when you need on the field, you need help. Uh, also, of course, we can, we can uh, interact with, uh, with the robot in, uh, in certain with different uh, ways. And uh, the, uh, reset, reset. And I go back to the 2D world where I can uh, start looking my, on my new tickets. So that's it. Thank you very much. Another thing that what we did, uh, because uh, I mentioned in such a business model when continuity and reliability of a great deal, we also looked at the solutions that can make a device highly reliable. And uh, I am inviting now Christy uh, to talk to you about a custom-made operating system that we have developed internally in iQuest for such cases and that we uh, are going to present as a demo to one of our customers in the next days. Thank you, Andrei. Hello, everyone. 15 or 20 years ago, I would uh, never have imagined that I will be part of a team responsible for the development of an entire operating system. <laughs> Thanks. And that uh, has already happened without uh, even noticing. Let me uh, take this opportunity to give you some insights into um, MBOS, a project that was uh, extremely interesting but also very challenging that we have started some time ago. Let me start by uh, trying to give you an answer to an um, obvious question. Why do you ever need another operating system? since there are already plenty of them around. Well, let me tell you that uh, we had uh, an extensive experience with customers having businesses in uh, domains like uh, automation or life sciences, and we identified some uh, key features that were either not uh, properly covered by the existing solutions or not, were not fully um, provided. And therefore, we took the decision to build an operating system in-house, in iQuest, from the ground. Without entering into deep details, because the, pro the process is quite complex and we are running out of time, I would just want to give you enough information to have an idea about the process that we followed in order to create such a product. What we did was to set up the requirements focused on these key features, portability, security, and reliability, being a small and fast system, and being extensible. What we did is to take a Linux kernel, as provided by the official distribution, and removing all the components, subsystems, modules, out of it, to have it as small as possible. Later, we added a bunch of open source components, reliable, robust, and we also built some uh, in-house developed components at both OS level and application level. We collected all these sources and used specially crafted cross-compilers, optimized for each target that we intend to provide as a platform 
for running this operating system. And we managed to create what is called MBOS, which is an abbreviation from embedded operating system. Let me quickly go through the typical use cases to see what we can do with such an operating system. The first candidate is an embedded device. And actually, we support a wide range of embedded devices that are not expensive because our operating system is small and can run really fast on hardware that is really cheap. By adding uh, devices, instruments, sensors, or whatever devices you may need, you can create an automated, automated, automated system used, for example, in a home automation platform, or you can go even to a larger scale in industrial automation. And last but not the least important is the medical field. And here we can deploy the operating system inside a medical instrument or can be attached to it in a device that acts as a gateway that can provide remote services, for example. Another use case is virtualization. This is very important, especially for us during development and testing, but also afterwards during the validation of the product. Why? Because we are able, with this operating system, to really emulate all the interfaces we support. Communication starting from Ethernet, from Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 3G, mobile connectivity, and so on. Another important benefit is that we are really close to port all these virtualization containers to the biggest pro providers like Amazon, Web Services, Microsoft, Azure, or um, Google Cloud. And with this solution, you benefit from the extremely high power or virtually unlimited scalability of uh, the virtual platforms. Of course, bringing into internet all the devices we have mentioned before and uh, make them uh, remotely accessible, monitored and controlled, we are entering the IoT world, where the IoT gateway will be represented and powered by this iQuest Envoy system, which will basically create a bridge between the devices and the services hosted on the cloud. So what we have now is a product, a very versatile and reliable operating system that is able to run uninterrupted and is also able to recover from unexpected situations like disasters. We have experience with such systems and we found this as a whole in what currently on the market the solutions provide and uh, we are actually um, taking as the next steps to organize a demo to one of our customers to prove that this system is able to fulfill all these uh, requirements and is able to uh, properly operate in conditions, in conditions similar to what they have in productions. For example, they, uh, they have devices that uh, are continuously running for one year or even more without a single reboot. That means that one, once it happens, there are high chances that this operating system will face some difficult scenario like uh, error conditions that uh, are accumulating in the background. And we are really hoping and are confident that this operating system will be able to provide what is missing currently on the market. Thank you. That was all about dive. Now we can go back to surface. And uh, if you have any questions, we can take them now or later in a break. At least one question. Thank you. To develop the OS. Christy. How long, how much time effort did it take to develop this? 
Well, we are in development for a couple of months now. I think uh, it's almost one year. And we are almost close to fulfill all these uh, requirements. But oh. it's already in a, in a very good shape. It's uh, already providing uh, automatic recovery and uh, boot failover. It's doing pretty well. We are also in the process of porting it. We are currently running on Intel and ARM architectures. And we are planning to support MIPS. This is a work in proces progress right now. And uh, also uh, PowerPC architectures. So we cover pretty much a, a really whole range of, uh, of devices. Other questions? So just to give you some numbers regarding the sizing, because this is another uh, key uh, feature that we, we focused. Uh, right now, the image has uh, 15 megabytes only. Just to have a comparison with a typical Linux distribution, it's 1,000 times smaller. And if we compare it to a typical Windows installation, it's 1,000 times smaller. We, yes, we mostly, uh, we are most, mostly focused on security and uh, reliability. Security meaning that we want to ensure that the software is authenticated and uh, uh, provides uh, the secureness you expect from the early stages of the boot process. So starting with the bootloader, we, are, we make it uh, reliable, meaning that we cannot uh, allow a kernel, for example, deployed that does not come from a, a control source code. Yeah. We use code signing and hardware assistant uh, encryption to provide this reliability. And uh, we also go further until the application level and the services level. No questions from Microsoft? <laughs> Just teasing. <laughs> okay, there is a one last question. I throw it. <laughs> we have to pay it. <laughs> so how do you do security patching? Security patching? Yes. Yes, this is a very good question because we mostly rely on open source components. So only the kernel has uh, around uh, 50 million lines of code. There are plenty of patches inside. What is uh, helpful for us and is a, is a benefit actually is that uh, the community in the Linux uh, world is huge. Um, the kernel is backed up, is powered by uh, large companies as uh, uh, Intel, uh, IBM, uh, Red Hat, which provide constantly uh, patches and updates to any uh, vulnerability that is published. So basically, once it, it is announced, for example, today, tomorrow, you have a patch already provided uh, from official sources. So is the rollout seamless? Yes. Yes, because with such a small uh, operating system, we can deliver it on the spot. It's, it's just uh, a matter of getting the patch, uh, applying it on the source code, and uh, recompiling it. We also plan to uh, automate the verification process by ha using our virtualized platform to perform an automatic uh, testing of uh, all the uh, supported uh, interfaces. Cool, thank you. Welcome. Okay, thank you again and um, have a good break and see you later back here. Mm -hmm.